Welcome back to Juniper Ridge, guys. As you can see, it's real windy today, but uh, super nice. It's cooled down, it's low 80s. I think we're about 80, 81. Um, but I've had a lot of requests from viewers to go through how to actually light your coal. I'm always just ripping it. I'm always, hey, I've got my coal going, and then I get right into cooking. I, I haven't really shown you guys how to light it and there's there's many different ways to do it um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna do three methods today but we're gonna start with a quick clean out I'm not gonna clean the, the outsides today we're just gonna do an ash clean out and uh, I've got my ash bucket behind here and I've already cleared out my little smoky Joe so you can see he's good and empty so we'll take the grill out And he's empty nothing in there this guy we're gonna do a stack method this is a simple easy way without any other assistance how to be success successful with your coal so I'm gonna pour new coal in here and we're gonna we're gonna light that all three I'll get them all at the same time going we'll go through the burn and then you'll see how the coal when it's you know how the coal is when it's ready to cook on and then I'll shut them down. Actually, one of them I'm gonna, I'll transfer coals around and then I'll cook dinner. But I really wanna go through the coal setup. So in the 24, we have recycled coal right now. So we're gonna take our coal trays. I don't remember what they call them on uh, Amazon. Coal baskets. So let's get our, our grate out, our grill cover. Let's get our grate baskets out. Okay, this is what we're going to use in the Mama Q today. We'll probably cook on the Mama Q. So we're going to have new coal in the 24, and that's going to go in a coal starter, which is right here. So you see this coal starter hanging. It's a little smaller than the big one. They're the same thing. But I'm going to use the smaller version because I don't want to use as much coal. And it really doesn't matter. It's going to come to a burn. I'm going to shut the ones down I don't need, and then I'll just use that coal the next couple days but let's start off with the 24s and the coal baskets because I'm going to take the recycled coal from last night's dinner which was fantastic ribs and meatballs and we're going to actually go in with our coal basket and you can use a shovel you can use whatever you want I just use my hands I just go wash up when I'm done so all those people out there, when you, this is obviously at the end of a barbecue, when you're done, seal it all down, close off all your air, close it all down, and you have recycled coal. Most people take this and throw it away. Why? You're throwing away money. This is fuel, right? doesn't matter if some are a little smaller or whatever. This literally right here is going to be enough to cook an entire meal. And you'll see that coal basket... It's going to go right down inside the Mama Q. But we're going to pull out the ashes first. Just so we have maximum airflow today. Because we did uh, Father's Day on the 20 inch on the Mama Q. And that was pork prime ribs and pork loin. So today we're going to do a sausage fest. We're going to be grilling sausages, andouille, booty, uh, boudin. Um, super dogs and what was the other one? Oh, bratwurst homemade or local bratwurst from Dick Howard's Boudin's from Broward, from Dick Howard's too so you can see we've filled up two trays with recycled coal I may add a couple coals to this basket because it's not quite to the top, but they're both almost full. One is totally full. So take out your bottom coal grate. You're gonna want to open up your bottom air and whatever tool you decide to use. I use this. If I find big coal, I'll pull them out. A lot of times I'll find good coal down here as well. Yeah. 
We just work it back and forth. Chunk of uh, ashes that was stuck together with the grease from the ribs last night. And sometimes you may have to stop, empty it, because it's getting really full. And you just got these little wires. You press them in, spin it, and then you can take your, your ashes out. Just like that. Right in the ash bucket. Okay, you just insert it back on the two, lift up the side, press in, spin around, and you can just continue away. You'll see that ash blowing, it's a little windy today, like I said. And usually when you do this, if you have more good, good coal, usable coal, it's not going to go through the air vents going to stay up top so you're just filtering the ash down through your air vents into your catch just work it back and forth start seeing the coal Looks like we've got a pretty good handful of it here. So that, all right there, is reusable coal. Okay. You don't have to spit shine it. So I mean that's plenty good. Go ahead and put your coal grate back in. If you want to re-empty your ash bin, you could do that at this time. Which I'll just go ahead and do, since we're going to start everything from fresh today. Might as well. We're already here. There's a hundred uses for this ash, too. So I'm going to dump this guy before I even get started. Because he's pretty full. Okay. Now the air's on this side. We'll pull our coal grate out. I'm going to move my grill for a second. There's another recycled coal. Another one. You just do the same thing. Just go in with your whatever tool you're using. It don't stand in the wind like me, like a dummy. You get coal all or uh, ash all over you. So these are both Weber's, but they have different mechanisms for their for your air draft. This one's got a front mount on the 24. This one has a back mount on the 20. They they work in the same same fashion, or just a little different style. No biggie. Okay, no coal left in that one, that was all ash, except for those two I picked out. Okay, your ash uh, grate will go back down. I'll empty that again, just so we're clear all the way. Actually, you can make gunpowder with ash. You can tan hides with ash and lime, all kinds of stuff. Um, you make soap. Throw it down on snow and ice, it actually melts the ice. So, millions of uses for ash. 
I use wood and coal ash. All right. So on the Mama Q, we're going to take our coal um, racks, put them right in. This is for indirect cooking, okay? What's cool about it, it keeps the heat centralized to two spots, and then it circulates, almost like a convection oven, okay? Then you meet, you cook right down the middle indirectly. And we did that on uh, Father's Day. But um, we're going to do it just so you guys get a really good view of it, okay? Over here, we're going to have the coal bin. And on the little Smoky Joe, we're doing a stack method, okay? There's other methods where you can snake and line the charcoal briquettes all the way around the grill on the outside. That's called the snake method. We're cooking uh, slow and low roasts and stuff on a kettle. Uh, I just tend to like to use these. I've done the snake method and it's not the best. So what, I'm, what I normally do, I'm going to show you in the little smoky, which is starting your coal pile on one side. So you'll have your indirect side, a searing side, and an indirect cooking side. And you can even do it on this little 14-inch Smoky Joe. Okay? So let me get coal. Literally, that's all you need. And you just take your coal. Get it over to one side. Let's move it all over. I might even have too many. We'll know shortly. Get a nice stack going. Don't let them spread out all over. You want them nice and tight. Because as they heat, they heat each other. Okay, and that's how your fuel works. You don't want to stack them clear to the grate though. You want to keep them down a little bit. Yeah, man, here we go again. My hat gets in my way. So I'll just turn her around and we're golden. That's actually going to be just perfect. Keep my coal where I want it. All right, let's put him right there. Okay. So there's one. Two is in the Mama Q with the recycled coal in the um, coal trays. And now let's load up the coal starter. For those of you that have trouble getting coal lit, keeping it lit, this is the best, easiest method there is, okay? Some people don't have success with this. The coal trays are much like that, but this is even easier yet. It's just a, a rocket chimney. Okay? Let's see here, one fell. All right, take a look down. It goes right inside the coal starter. So these all three are really su successful methods for starting your barbecue coal. Then you take your lighter fluid. You don't need to kill it with lighter fluid. All right. Lighter fluid starts it. Once it starts, coal will do it on its own. You know, soak the top, let it roll down. Good. And you're going to find with, with uh, recycled coal, it does not take near as much lighter fluid. It takes off quick. But if you see it start burning down quick, you can always add a few coals to it. You know, obviously I'm not going to need to add much because it's ready to rock and roll. They're just about to the top. And this is our standalone method one side you can also do the same thing either side or stack them in the middle if you want to do burgers and you want a full bottom of coals just start them in the middle well you can even start them here and just spread them out it doesn't take a ton to get them ready to go you don't need to fill your coal line clear up here that's waste that's just a waste you know there's there's not you could look at any one of these three methods and the, the coal is not even a third of the grill, all right? And that's the way you want it. So go ahead and give them a light. Let him go. 
And watch how quick this one goes. Just one spot, I don't have to do anything else. And the second you start your new coal, you're talking 30 minutes, okay? Recycled coal could be ready in a minute, you know, 15, 20 minutes. It just goes quicker. Now let's light our, our charcoal chimney. Fire! So we're all lit. So that's how to light them. These methods are how you're going to keep them together and how you're going to ensure that your fuel will cook even and that you're ready to rock and roll with your barbecue. For those of you that have trouble keeping it lit, if you do these steps, it will not go out on you. Make sure it has oxygen. Both bottoms are open fully. Let's check our little little guy make sure he's open he is not all right he is now never vents open all three of these barbecues have top vent and bottom vent okay that one's on the back, that one's on the front, this one's on the front. These big smoky mountains have three of them, okay? They're all along the bottom. On both of those little smoky mountains, or the smoky mountains, they have them. Those are your air controls for your temperature. So your airflow determines your heat. So you, you can always cook on a, on a lower temp or you can cook on a higher temp. It all depends on your adjustment of your air vents. It's very simple. The more air it has, the hotter it's going to cook. The less air it has, the slower it's going to cook. And when you see the fire go out, don't worry. Leave it be. You're going to start seeing white on the coals. That means they're lit. Okay. Then they're gonna, the coal is going to go through its process of fully lighting, at which takes a good 20 five to 30 minutes with brand new coal. Yeah, and you'll see on the chimney, um, what's cool about it is up on the sides, let me get my poker shovel. Up on the sides, it'll start glowing red. When that starts glowing red, you know that's done. Because what it does is it heats all the way down through the bottom with these air vents it's just like a rocket stove. You literally could cook right on top of this right now. You know, you could start off with a, um, well, you'd have to put a cross plate so you got a little air vent up top, but you could cook on this like a rocket stove as long as you had something across the top for an air gap. Just a simple trivet off a stove works. But yeah, when it's red up here, you know that coal's ready. So, a viewer asked, why would you use a chimney? Well, because it's the easiest way to light your coal. It does everything for you. It controls the burn. It gets all the coal evenly burning. And then you simply take your handle and distribute it in your barbecue. Okay, you can put it anywhere you want to go. That's how I start everything for my Dutch oven. That's what I really have those for. I don't very often use it just because I've, lit, I've used coal for so long that I don't need it. All right, on our standalone method, because they were lit first, if you come over this way, you take a peek, and yeah, don't touch them, <laughs> obviously. They're, they're going. You can start seeing the white on the edges, okay? That means that they are lit. So you just let them be and make sure they have plenty of air. They're gonna do their own thing, all right? So let them be. You'll see our recycled coal. Our fire just went out. All right, so if we take a look down at the Mommy Q, the recycled coal, what I've done is, I put, it's really windy. 
and after they start to light on the back of most of these Weber kettles there's a handle hook and it is right there I'm not gonna touch it because it's hot can you can you see that maybe if I come over in the right there it's a little hook hanging off that's for you to hang your grill off the side but if you turn it around backwards right side up you can actually hang it right off the back of the grill and now it's like a wood stove with an open door okay the wind isn't gonna um, it's gonna block the wind give it plenty of oxygen from the bottom and the top for those coals to get rolling and they're actually getting nice and red if you get a close look in here since I put the dome on take a look down in the coal baskets you can see them glowing red okay so we're probably that's just the start you want flame coming off the top of both sides when flame starts to come off the top of both sides you know you're ready to cook okay so we're not quite there yet but we're getting there you can see over on the little smoky joe we got smoke coming up the bottom top and you start seeing the red in the middle okay this guy's getting close too right they probably we're probably seven minutes or so away now let's take a look at our coal chimney if you look down in you're going to start seeing it glow red see the red coal down in there okay it's not quite ready either but we are getting there so we're going to let them finish up and then we'll go over um, in the in the big kettle the 24 we'll do it like you're going to do uh hamburgers hot dogs okay so we just go ahead and spread our coal out evenly across the bottom of the grill and then we have our indirect going and i have the rack on there burning off because that's the one i'm going to use tonight and i'll probably um, transfer some coal from one of the other twos into the monocue for for dinner um, i may cook a couple on the little uh, smoky joe just to uh, show you how it works that'll be another video this one specifically I just want you to be able to successfully light your coal get your coal to cook temp and not have it go out on you so when we're done with this video you should be able to start your coal get it to light to cooking temperature and be able to cook your food and simple at the end at the end I'll go over it you know um, in another video but basically you just shut your grills down close them up it takes care of itself and that's where we started today was with our recycled coal from another barbecue don't ever throw it away there's no sense in doing it you're just throwing money away the whole point of this is to make really good food barbecued food inexpensively and, and I'm talking when you get the grills how you get the grills and how you barbecue all right if you can grill every day inexpensively then you're more likely to be able to continue to do it if it's costing you too much money because you're throwing fuel away you're not going to continue to do it you'll only do it once in a while because it gets expensive but if you're reusing everything just like you know our native brother and sisters they didn't waste anything right use everything so if there's coal usable reuse it all right so these are ready we're going to start with the smoky joe over there in our uh standalone method i'll show you a couple little tricks here i got one glove this is good all right so we'll need this for the chimney tower or chim yeah coal chimney so if you want to come over here and take a peek We'll get off the grate always burn the grate off just use your forks to move the grate it's, it's red all the way through they're completely white this is cook ready okay so we can let's we'll spin our grill around clean off that other side then we'll scrape it with our wire brush and then we're good to cook on that one 
So we're going to put this on and just leave him cocked. He's going to get plenty of oxygen and he's going to keep roaring. Once I seal that down, he's going to go down to cook temp. That's whatever I have open here and open here. Okay. Let's go to Mama Q. She's ready. We're all white on both sides. We have fire coming up. We're red on both sides. Okay, you see the red coals right there. And again, I was burning the grill off, but you can see the fire floating. This one is ready. We'll let him continue to go. We'll just leave him cocked a little bit too. Okay, about like that. Both of them are about the same. All right, now our third one is our coal chimney. And you don't have to, but I always recommend put a glove on. Safety first. Okay, you reach in, you grab your coals, you're ready to go, and you're going to do burgers, dogs, steaks, whatever. Okay, you just pour them right out on the grill. Put your coal starter down to cool, away from everything. You can move them around a little bit if you want. This would be the time you'd want to put your... And I know it doesn't look like a lot because I didn't fill it with a lot. But this is when, right here is enough to cook burgers, dogs, or your steak right there. That's plenty. You get your grate on, get it burned off. You can half hitch your lid the same way. Leave it cracked and it's going to keep flying. It'll stay, whoop, I'm over here. It'll stay with good heat. There you go. So all three grills are ready to cook on. And this is how you properly light your charcoal, get it to work and burn and get it to cooking temperature. And right now we're just cleaning grates off. You can see fire starting in there. It's doing its job. Let's take a look at the Little Smoky Joe over here. Looking great. Grill there is good. Just take your wire brush. Give it a little clean off. Okay, you can sear on one side, indirect cooked on the other. And if you want to do burgers, dogs, or whatever, take your tool, take your grate off with your tool, set it down, move your coals where you want them, put your grate back on. You're ready to go. Okay? 100% ready. He's the cook temp. We're going to seal him. He'll get down to cook temp. Let's clean the grate on this guy, on the Mama Q. Okay, he's ready to go. I think I just flipped, flipped down, sorry. I'm back. You take a look at the Mama Q now. That's cooking temp, ready for sealed lid to go on. It's got the charcoal trays in there, baskets. Baskets, I believe they're called. All right, let's see how close we are to clean and grill on here. We'll give him another couple minutes. I'll let him rip tater chip. And this guy's got a hook on him too. So I just slide him back, put it on the hook, and let it rip. So here shortly, I'm going to grab the sausages and get to cooking. Oh yeah. You wouldn't think that that little pile of coal would do anything in that 24 inch grill. Look at the heat coming out of there. 
Just ripping. Just ripping, boys. Grill's clean. I'm still letting this guy stay hot. If you're cooking steaks, you want a hot grill. Because you're going down right on the coal, right above the coals for a three to four and a half minute time, maybe two to four minute time period. And then flipping and boom. Always important to have your meat at room temperature. So don't just yank it out of the fridge and, and cook. You want to let your meat get to room temperature. So take it out of the fridge. Let it set. All right. Let it rest. Season it. Wrap it up. Let it set. You can, you can put a little olive oil. Put it in a uh, gallon bag with the seasoning, a little olive oil. Let it set out. Right. Usually at least an hour. Get it to room temperature. Because what happens if you pull out of the fridge and you throw cold meat right down on the grill is you're going to end up with a tough product. Now there are certain, and I did do a video on half thawed pork chops and half thawed chicken wings. And I did explain that when you're cooking, when I cook chicken, I actually a whole chicken, I don't thaw it completely because as it cooks, it thaws in the middle and it creates moisture and it makes for a crispy outside and a super tender, juicy meat inside. So it gives it moisture. Unless you're doing a beer can chicken, then you can have a fully thawed bird. But with a, with a whole bird, you always want to have moisture in the middle of the bird. So that makes sense. All right. We're going to go ahead and close him up. You're ready to cook on all three grills. And uh, looks like we've got some sausages that have showed up. So these are super dogs. And we're going to cook these because they're bacon wraps. We want to cook these indirectly. Okay. We don't want to cook these direct on the heat here. Because what happens is you end up getting that bacon too crispy, too hard, black in the bacon. It's just not as good. You want a nice even cook on these. And we'll just go right down on the smoky gel. Just like if we were in the woods. So we got five of these guys. Plenty of room. Okay. Always spin away from spin your vent away from your heat source. Okay. And like I said, if this was the time you wanted to have wood, we could add wood at this point. I don't think Mama wanted wood on her super dogs tonight, but we can uh, do a little wood chips on something else. So this is Boudin, Louisiana sausage, has rice in it, it's delicious. I can't eat it because of the rice, but look at those babies. Are we going? All right, so these are Boudin from Dick Howard's. They have rice in them. Get a look at them babies. All handmade sausage. So we're going to go right down on the Mama Q, right down the middle. Okay, and the last ones we got, which I'll get those a little closer because we'll need the room. Dick Howard's Bratwurst. Fantastic. Look at those babies. Okay, lit him up. Since it's direct or indirect cooking, we got heat on both sides. You run your vent right to the back. 
let it rip. Now, show you how to do your wood chips. Okay, so we'll take this guy and put him on the Mama Q and grab our gloves. Get the grate off. Okay. And then you just simply get your wood right in there. Okay. Three pieces, plenty. Okay. And then they'll start smoking. So we'll let him rip open a little while. Make sure that coal's good and hot. And you can start seeing the smoke coming here in a second. And again, those are the chunks, not the chips. And those are mesquite. The only sausage I have left to put on is andouille. That's in the fridge. So we'll save the andouille. This is more of just a show you on the 24 kettle. Here pretty quick, you're going to start seeing the smoke roll. It could take a few minutes. It's not a big deal. Just let it let it do its thing. And there she goes. Here comes your smoke. And it'll it'll just keep increasing. And at this point, you'd be putting your food on, right down on the coals, and lidding it back up. So let's say if you just put your chop, burger, dog, whatever you want to cook, it's down, the smoke's rolling. Again, this is heat all over the bottom. Just put your vent to the back. And then she'll start cooking away. The reason you put the vent in the back is because it makes the smoke roll in because it's even heat, just like on the Mama Q. You got heat coming from two sides to the center like a convection oven. On this, it's dead in the middle, heading straight up. Put the vent in the back, you've got your airflow from the bottom and it's going to swirl the heat. It's going to cook in a circle. And then it just vents out the back. And that's how the smoke gets into the meat. But like on our um, super dogs that are cooking away, let me grab my tongs. I don't think we'll need to flip them yet, but we'll get a look. Oh, those are looking good. Not quite flip time. You feel them they're a little bit stuck? You can pull them off. That's telling you that they're not quite ready to flip. But boy, do they look good. Hang on just a second, guys. Let me go grab this. All right, so we've gotten the coal started. We've gotten the cooking temp, and now you're cooking. So anybody could do this. So thanks for coming and joining us on Juniper Ridge, and we'll see you again next time. Peace. And it's going. But we're going to wait till it's glowing red. When it starts glowing red on 
the standalone and in the coal holders, the coal racks, you'll start seeing red. The coal baskets. And I'll leave a link below for the coal baskets on Amazon. And also for the coal chimney. You can get these relatively cheaply on Amazon, wherever. You can get these at Walmart, pretty much any store. Probably 10 bucks, 15 bucks, something like that. You also can find stuff like this at yard sales, so keep your eyes open. Because a lot of people don't even know what these are. They have no clue that that's a coal chimney. And that that's, uh, those are coal baskets. And they have other varieties of coal baskets. For the people that have square barbecues, like the one below here, they have square coal holders. So you can still section your coal off on two sides on this little guy and do the same thing. This one actually has a pretty good grill space on it for portable cooking. Does it cook as good as the Weber's? Yeah, I don't know, I'm biased, I like Weber's, but I guarantee I can cook up some food on that, no problem. Okay, we're gonna let them do their thing for their 20, 30 minutes here. Now we probably get about 20, 25 minutes left. So we're gonna let them do their, their work. We're gonna pause for a minute so you don't have to just sit here and watch coals heating up. As they start getting red, I'm gonna come back on and I'll show you what everything looks like. 